This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Able. Good morning and welcome. This strange light that you see on the surface of my desk is none other than the sun. This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Able. When he sent me in his 1 to 6 credo, he also got one of these for free, which was a nice touch added on from Optics Planet. What this is, is an optics magnifier, but not like for a red dot, for an actual optic, like an LPVO, for example, because this one is specifically set up for 30 millimeter or one inch tubes. I've never got my hands on one of these, but right now on Optics Planet, these are around 130 to around 200 bucks, which doesn't sound like a whole lot of money for what this potentially can give you. What would you use this for? Well, I think this would be good if you have, let's say a one to four, one to six LPVO, there's our little spacer, and you want to do some grouping at longer distances. I don't know how I would feel about this thing being on your gun full time, but you know what? I'm sure this serves a purpose, and let's see if that purpose is worth the money or not. So what do you get? You get this cute little thing with very nice slits in the back for your clamp onto the front objective of your LPVO. Let me increase the brightness ever so slightly. You basically put this on the end of your optic, you tighten it down, and then you can make adjustments for your elevation and your windage to center your reticle inside the center of this. I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to find out today together. Uh, fit and finish feel actually very nice. It's kind of heavy, a little bit heavier than I was expecting. And as you can see, it's uh, eight ounces. That's a lot of weight, in my opinion, especially be hanging off the front of your LPVO. Um, another reason why I probably wouldn't recommend this getting put on the front of your optic and being left there, because this is a lot of weight, especially clamping it around the glass. Uh, where I think it could deform stuff, especially if you over if you over torque this. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's get this on a scope and see what it looks like. So here we are checking out the Strike Eagle One to Eight Gen Two, and I'm just going to slide this over the front, which is kind of nerve wracking, and see what we get. Uh, right off the bat, it looks like we get a huge diminished amount of view through the optic which uh, does not surprise me in the slightest. I'm only going to slightly, slightly put tension on the rear two screws just to see what we get. Now, this is at 1x. We're going to bump the magnification up. Ah, okay. So we could see through it at higher magnifications, which is, again, what I expected this thing to be used for. But we do have a slight eye box shift, which is that darkening in the, in the edges. If we back it out to about five and a half x it mostly goes away now this is much easier to correct in person you just simply move your face forward or slightly back especially if you're only shooting for groups it's not the end of the world uh on my setup it's very rigid so i'd have to move the scope back a little bit which i'll probably do when we start looking outside but to give you a very generalized understanding of how this thing is going to operate at one x you get a lot of tunnel vision but once you crack it past mm, right around two x it goes away and then from six to eight she starts to darken a little bit but if this thing is clear enough to actually pick up what we're looking at properly in the real world then that's not the end of the world to have a slight eye box shift again only for a temporary means for grouping now let's see real quick if i adjust the elevation if we're going to have any sort of adjustments to that shadow they include a penny which is nice it's kind of hard to see if this is actually moving or not. Maybe a little bit, but it's just centering the shadow more on the reticle. All right, let's uh, put this in the real world, shall we? 1x to 8x, this is without the magnifier. The 8x is soft on this, so if the optics aren't that good, I'm not expecting a really good turnaround here at 8x. But if we back this out to about 6x, the image sharpens up dramatically. So we're going to back this out to 1. I'm going to put it on, and we're going to see if it can mimic that result. There are no individual adjustments as far as a, 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 adjusting another part of the glass on the front of this thing. It's just, it is what it is. Let's slowly bring it up. I want to bring it up to about six, which is right around there. And though we are definitely have more magnification, 
the image quality is not what I would want. That's pretty sharp. And that's around five, that's around 4x actually. So this thing seems to magnify also imperfections in the glass. As far as the image resolution of this thing goes, for this with this particular scope, again, at 4x, it looks really good. But anything above that, we start having issues. I slid the scope back about a quarter of an inch in the mount. And we're going to see if the shadowing is completely disappeared. Yes, it has. But it doesn't help anything because the image quality is dog doo-doo. All right, so jumping from a $300 optic to a $900 optic, this is the Credo 1 to 6 first focal plane, also sent in by Abel. Uh, again, at 1x, it has very big field of view. And at 6x, the image looks pretty good, especially on the center. So let's back this thing out, put this thing on, and see what it does to the image. So right off the bat, exact same sort of tunneling that we see at 1x, gone around 2 and increased all the way up to 6x and oh dear oh my we have the exact same sort of image quality it's not that impressive no matter who you are so let's see where this is going to end up being clear or at least really clear because i'm only concerned about super sharpness that is right around three and a half there's 4x it dulls out a little bit so around three and a half x so what this is effectively doing is yes it's doubling your top end of your most magnification that you could put but it's only giving you a sharp enough image at half of your scope's maximum magnification that i've seen with both the one to one to eight it was at four x and here on this one to six it's around three three and a half so what are you really getting for your money with this thing because that is not an impressive image but see, I'm not shooting out to 400 yards with my LPVO anywhere. I'm shooting within 50 to 100 yards. So yeah, I know this video isn't going to be as in-depth as I usually go, but that roof line is exactly 50 yards, and that tree line is 120 yards. So again, if we increase our magnification, the roof line actually starts deteriorating at an even lower magnification. Now with the 1 to 8 Strike Eagle, it is a little bit shy of 3x when it really starts to degrade down to nothing and as far as the tree line goes I'll go to eight and back out right around there looks pretty good we're again a little bit over 3x probably about three and a half now you want to bump it up even farther to 800 yards or so we'll go at 8x and we'll back it out until it looks nice and sharp that looks pretty good to me and that is now at just over 4x. So there's no real environment that this thing is going to work perfectly in. You saw it from 50 to 800 yards. I hate to say it, but there's no good use for this thing. As you can see, there's no adjustability to change the focus on this thing versus your scope, which is honestly what it really needs to get the most out of it. This does unscrew. But this only unscrews so you could change the back piece to a different size clamp. This being a 30 millimeter, obviously, as you saw, and we have the one inch reducer for it. If you wanted to put this on a 34, 35, you're obviously going to need a different one. As you can see right there, it says 30. You make sure this is fully tight by lining up the marks and you're good to go. This would be awesome if it worked. But as you just saw, it doesn't. It doesn't effectively double your magnification range in a usable sense. It just doubles your magnification range in the sense that, hey, I can make you see twice as far, but half as good. So what's really the benefit there? Do you want your image to be larger, but completely blurry? Or do you want your image to remain sharp? In any case, at least with the Strike Eagle 2, 1 to 8, this thing is sharper at 4x with the magnifier than the optic is by itself at 8x. So technically, yeah, you can make that argument, but is it really worth the money for this? Whereas you could spend five, six hundred dollars on an LPVO and get a little bit more out of it. Just saying. And even if this did work 100%, this is still only a temporary use item. I would not feel comfortable leaving this thing mounted on the front of my optic 
and you know playing around with it dropping it hitting it into stuff as you can see here with the strike eagle you slide it right on the front or on any lpvo with a 30 millimeter main tube and then you cinch those four allen keys down now yes i did try sliding this forward a little bit to see if i can sharpen the image but it didn't happen not only that at that point you're now taking this clamp and you're not having it over this big thick section you're putting it over this thinner section right here and now you have to wonder if you're going to collapse that or break that front objective lens not really ideal so would this have a place in my bench if it worked properly you know what i would honestly say yes but it doesn't work properly this needs its own focus to fine tune it to the scope and then it would be great now Again, the two optics that we used are only two out of a million. They obviously don't have any sort of side focus or parallax adjustment. With that, maybe you could get a little bit more out of this. But most LPVOs don't have that. So take it for what it's worth. So with that being said, Abel, thank you very much for sending this in for a review. Uh, he did not buy this. It was sent in with the Trigicon again. But that's going to be getting sent back because he's not going to use it either. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.